So let's let's move. Over. Let's talk about Cy Hawk. This line is Iowa minus three. The game is in Iowa City. Uh, you know that those boys, those little kids in the hospital, are going to be watching this game, and it is going to be awesome. The line, like I said, Iowa minus three. Let me get this total real quick. Um, it's 35, 35 and a half in most places, actually. So I think the the market is anticipating a lower scoring game, but we saw how the first half was a little shaky for Iowa okay, against Illinois State. But they kind of turned it around a little bit, you know, and I think there were some flashes of that offense looking pretty decent. You had a wide receiver that actually did something, as well as Luke, a healthy Luke Lackey just looked awesome. Right, and that was something that you were missing last year. Part of the offensive struggles was that you were missing Eric All and Luke Lackey, uh, that got injured in that game, or early in the season. Reese Van Der Zee, five receptions, sixty-six yards, two touchdowns. I mean, that was a this is that was a position that we were worried about, and it didn't involve Caleb Brown, right? If Reese Van Der Zee ends up playing pretty good football at the wide receiver position. And they can get matchups, and Cade Mackman and America can, can move this team down the field. I mean, it'll be interesting. And look, Caleb Johnson in, in the running back spot, Kamari Moulton, LaShawn Williams didn't even do anything. And they, they then they had success with their own. Like they have some, I think they have some decent stuff in this offense. We've talked about their defense a numerous amount of times. This Iowa defense is electric, it is elite. They still have plenty of talent on it. Phil Parker is still that dude. Iowa State struggles in week one with maybe a lesser opponent, but don't let that fool you. That's kind of what happened last season, and they kind of picked it up offensively. The one thing that I was a little worried about is them not being able to really run the ball. Once again, that was something that came up in the bowl game against Memphis that led to their ultimate demise and just kept getting shelled defensively, and then offensively they couldn't run the ball, and too much was put on the shoulders of Rocco Becht. So what where are you feeling? What are you feeling about this game? And what are you excited for matchup wise? This is interesting. This is first of all a classic, you know, one team, you know, a lot of buzz, right? With Iowa coming in that offense, coming to rival game, and then Iowa State who struggled a week ago with FCS power note North Dakota, right? So it's classic, you know, teams trending in opposite directions, looking to get right for their rivalry game. I don't know, man. The last time they played in Iowa City, let, let, let I remind you. They, I would say one, 10 to seven, classic, classic Cyhawk game. Hunter Decker's name drop had 184 yards. Xavier Hutchinson went for almost 100 of those yards and they scored a late fourth quarter touchdown, or I guess, you know, middle fourth quarter touchdown on a 99 yard drive that went almost 12 minutes in time. Classic, classic. I love that, man. You could take the Big Ten West out of Iowa, but you can't take. No, I fucking said that wrong. Regardless, though, you know what I'm saying. This this game is going to be awesome. The only thing that concerns me for Iowa State is, man, like sometimes they just for, they just don't run the ball. Like like Abu Sam is a really good football player. Carson Hansen's a nice compliment. Sometimes they just for, not forget, but I don't know what the word is. Where like it's like, why did you only have 22 rushing attempts? Why did Abu Sama touch the ball? five times on the ground last week he averaged seven yards to carry what what's going on there is that a game plan thing is that a game script thing what needs to change there someone has to figure that out right for them to be able to get right taylor mauser and, and matt campbell need to figure that out because to me that's gonna be something you cannot forget not forget you cannot abandon the run against iowa that is when you lose the football game because they will pin their ears back they will get those playmakers out there in the secondary and at the second level with linebacking, and they will haunt you. Rocco Beck will will struggle if he is throwing the ball 30 times a game, 35 times a game. That's what I wanted. But also on the other side there, I look at a guy like Jaden Higgins, man, on the outside, yeah. maybe Isaiah Alston and Eli Green. I mean, Sebastian Castro is a stud, right? And in the middle, you have got two you know, elite safeties there, elite safety duo, right? Obviously, in Nwankwa and Schultz, but – let those guys go on the outside and, and, you know, hopefully you can protect you know, those Iowa pass rushers. And they got a lot of them. They got a ton of guys coming back. Obviously you're replacing Joe Evans, you know, but damn it, man. Deontay Craig is really, really good. Yaya Black is damn good as well. Ethan Herkett, I know, 
they're excited about there. He's a hometown kid. You know he wants this. So I I don't know, man. I I'm just gonna go gut feeling. I'm just gonna go Iowa State to win. And obviously I'll take them to cover. Ooh. I don't buy into the hype yet of Iowa State's offense. Or I'm excuse me, Iowa's offense because it was Illinois State. I know they, they looked good in the second half, but let's just slow the roll here, okay? Let's slow the roll here. Listen, Iowa State, their offense, their defense looked good last week, honestly, against North Dakota. And we'll see. I mean, they've got guys that can rotate really up front. You know, the, the linebackers are pretty, pretty, pretty good. Plus, Miles Purchase comes in. I think he can, you know, do his best against those receivers, you know, like you said, Van Der Zee for Iowa. So I'm going to go um, Iowa State here. Now, I, listen, if I'm proven wrong, I think it's going to be Luke Lackey because he worries me because I don't see a guy on Iowa State that can really just, you know, shut him down. And not most people can't. Most teams do not have a guy that can. He's that that good. And we'll see how Iowa uses him. But I think enough points will be scored from Iowa State, enough tries, field position, all that good stuff. And uh, they'll be able to get the win there on the road. I like Iowa to win. The struggle that I have, though, is laying three points with Iowa, like historically these last couple of years, is like not guaranteed. And when Iowa wins, it's not guaranteed that they're going to win by more than a field goal. It's 12 to 10. It's, it's 12 you know, to 10. 7 to 8. 5 to 2. That was a real <laughs> score. Or no, it was, was it 7 to 2? But they had two. 6 to 4. 6, six to, to 4. four. <laughs> what is that? Sometimes you'll get, you know, it's, you know, 15 to 17 type game. Yeah. It's so crazy. I'll lay the three. I really want to play this Iowa team. This is not a bettable game for me at all. Is this ever a bettable game? No. <laughs> and I think and, you're right. I think Iowa State, like offensively, if they get enough possessions and they give themselves enough chances that they might be able to do something. The question is, is, is this Iowa offense actually for real? Like there still is a ton of pressure on this defense to perform. So I don't feel great about taking Iowa and laying the three, but uh, I, I guess I'll fade you on that one, but I don't feel good about either side, but I'm going to, I'm going to go with my gut. And I believe that Iowa is a better football team than Iowa state. So I'm, and it's at home. I got to believe that Iowa's going to win this one. So, but I, I see where you're coming from, dude. I see where you come from. If they make enough plays, those wide receivers make enough plays on the outside for Iowa State, and Rocco Beck just stays sturdy. And but, they, they capitalize. They make field goals. They don't squander opportunities in offense or turn the ball over. Iowa State can win this football game. Listen, real quick here, last point I got is there's no Tory Taylor in this game. And I know it's, that might sound like a joke, uh, mentioning a punter for Iowa, but, I mean, he averaged 50 yards a punt. Right, a couple years ago, and I would say, like, he has been a difference maker in close games. That's what you get for Iowa. And Rise Dask Dakin is there, obviously, talented kid, young kid, bright future ahead of him. I'm sure of that. And I'm not going to pretend to know everything in the ins and outs of punting, but listen, I mean, he averaged four yards of punt, right? I, a couple of them I know are in the 20 and all that, but I don't quite know if it's the kind of pinpoint accuracy that you got and the pinpoint leg strength that you got from Tory Taylor in terms of like, Given Iowa State the whole length of the field to go and drive and, and backing up Rocco Beck and making him, you know, complete six to seven first downs because that's when you get in trouble with Iowa defense is, you know, having to grind out possessions, go the distance of the field just to get in the field goal range. And then obviously, you know, Iowa City, you never know what the weather there, you never know what the wind. It could be a, you know, a very tough place to kick field goals at times. Yeah, definitely. So. We'll see. This is going to be an awesome football game. I will be dialed into this game.